Aloha and welcome to another presentation of the Hawaii Women in Business series. We're so glad you joined us and we have a wonderful presentation ahead for us. My name is Annette Lynch. I am a program manager with Maui Economic Development Board and I'm going to share with you a little bit of housekeeping as you get ready for the presentation. Let me find my uh, controls. <laughs> So we are talking about storytelling to build your brand and your business. You might, if you haven't done already, pop your name, make sure it's your name featuring and you might like to put your organization so we know who is on the call. Uh, please remain muted unless you're called upon to speak. We will have time at the end for uh, Q&A. So in that regard, you can either um, put up your hand physically. There's a the raise hand feature in the Zoom probably be the best way to uh, get our attention and you can also use the chat if you're feeling a bit shy well, we look forward to your questions at the end of the presentation yes the webcast is being recorded and will be available at medb.org and we will be sending out notification when that is ready usually within 24 hours of the presentation and we always ask for feedback at the end of our presentation and my colleague Leilani Ventura thank you very much is going to pop that link in the uh, in the feed now, so you have that link and have it open just for ready to complete it at the end. We really appreciate it. Really helps us to to learn what's working, what can we do better. You know, what kind of topics do you want to hear? So please complete that feedback at the end. With that, I am going to pass the microphone to Leslie Wilkins, President and CEO of Maui Economic Development Board, to share a little bit more about the presentation and our speaker. Hello, everyone. Thank you, Annette. And also thank you to Behind the Scenes, our Leilani Ventura, for bringing this presentation to you. Um, as announced, I'm honored to serve as the President and CEO of MEDB. Over the last couple of years, we have made a commitment to building economic opportunities and business capacity in women-owned businesses throughout our communities. We know that 40% of the businesses in Hawaii are owned by women. However, most of them are what are called solopreneurs. They do not have paid employees and their revenues are well under 100,000. So we know a way to strengthen our economy, diversify our economy is to invest in our women-owned businesses to help them reach their economic potential. We also know there's a huge interest in startups with women pulling more EIN numbers and opening businesses post during and post pandemic than their male counterparts. So on the audience today, uh, you can see it's a pretty good split on the maturity of a business with still startups. Again, having most of you on uh, the call. And then if you look at the business structure, the most popular one is an LLC. Next slide, Annette. And um, we're really scattered among all the business, uh, you know, types and NAICS codes. Uh, lots in the food services, arts and entertainment, very common in a visitor-driven economy. And then, of course, professional and scientific and retail trade. So, but again, a lovely cross-section in the audience today. Next. And now it is my pleasure to introduce our guest speaker. And I would like to thank our partner, Webeck West, the Women's Business Enterprise Council is our partner in helping women get SBA certified and again, reach their economic potential. They have made this introduction and brought Melissa to us because she's one of their star businesses. As you can see, she's a newscaster turned award-winning storyteller. But what she doesn't say is that she is a three-time number one best-selling author on Amazon, and she is the founder and CCO of a creative marketing and content production company. And I love this name. You have to tell us the story, Melissa, of how you selected Duck Punk Productions, Inc. She's crafted over 1,200 brand stories for clients such as Weston, Old Navy, Nissan, Verizon, Wells Fargo, and another A-list client list. We're so delighted to have you and hear your input, recommendations, and your successful story. So thanks so much for being with generous with your time and joining us today, Melissa. And for all the audience, we provided her stellar biographical information for all of you to read. 
Hi, everyone. I'm so happy to see you all here. And I, before I start, I just want to say I was in Maui a few weeks ago, and I was just, you know, floored by the beauty, the people, the culture and everything. You know, it was a very, very memorable, memorable trip for me. And um, I should have to find another reason to come back. <laughs> so, okay. So are you guys ready? Today, we're going to be talking about storytelling and how you can start applying storytelling in your business to build your brand, drive sales, and win more customers. Now, before I start, I do want to answer the question Leslie have, um, the name of my company, Duck Punk. So back in 2000, I was trying to find a name for my company, and I so happened to be at this lake, and I was feeding the ducks with breadcrumbs. And there was one dog from Mohawk, just my just like my logo, you'll see once I start the PowerPoint. And he would come over to get to the food. So after 45 minutes, as I was leaving, and uh, I would still throw some breadcrumbs into the lake, and he would still charge over to get to the food. So I kept looking at him and thinking, wow, you this one tiny dog, how much more can you eat? You've been eating this whole time. That night, I went home. I just couldn't shake that image off my head. So I started playing with the word punk rock, Punk Duck and Mohawk. And six weeks later, I decided to name my company Duck Punk. But that was half of the story. Because years later, he became my inspiration. So at the time, um, before I, you know, before he became my inspiration, at the time, my justification was because my name, my last name is Tom. So by alphabetical order, I'm always on the very last page or second last page. So I thought if I have a company name, I might as well have a letter that is like a little bit earlier so that I don't end up on the very last page. So that's why instead of calling it Punk Duck, I flipped it and call it Duck Punk. But again, you know, years later, he became my inspiration because as a woman of color working in entertainment and advertising is very, very cutthroat. So I have to remind myself every time I jump across a hurdle, I have to be like him and never give up and go to go after my dreams. So that's my duck punk story. Okay, so let me share screen. All right, let me start. From the beginning. Okay, is everyone seeing my screen okay? Yes? Perfect. Yes, that looks great. Okay, move this control out a little bit. Okay, all right. So here, um, I want to speak, you know, talk a little bit about my background. So I began my career as a TV newscaster. And I truly believe that looking back, um, those four years in the newsroom really helped me learn everything about storytelling and be able to apply it in you know, the work that I do now. Because when I was working in the newsroom, besides just doing anchoring the news, I was also responsible for a daily five-minute human interest segment where I had to cover anything but hard news. So in those four years, I interviewed thousands of people from all walks of life and ended up crafting and covering over 1,200 on-air stories. So that really laid a very solid foundation for me as a storyteller. And moving forward, um, I worked on a CBS primetime scripted show called Martial Law before I started my own company, Duck Punk, in 2000. So all in all, I have over 25 years of both in front of and behind the camera experience. And some of my clients have seen sales increase up to 400%. Um, I've directed and produced many TV commercials for big clients and worked with major celebrities such as Shaq, Brian Cranston, Kiki Palmer, Jackie Chan, um, and so forth. So these are some of our major awards, some of our major clients, and always like some fun pictures. So the above one is the, um, I don't know if you recognize him, um, Kit Cuddy. We shot a McDonald's commercial with him. And the one below is Kiki Palmer. We shot an Old Navy commercial with her. And, you know, both are a blast to work with. Okay, so before we dive into storytelling, I want to give you guys a fundamental principle. And, and this is why people buy. Can anyone tell me why people buy? Feel free to raise your hand um, if you have the answer. I want to hear why you think people buy. Anybody? Because they like you? Yes, they like you for sure. Anybody else besides they like you? 
they because need, they need the product. They need the product. Okay. Okay, Terry. Um, they trust you. They trust you, Margie. Um, it, you're you're selling something they believe they need. They believe they need. Correct, Michelle. You're providing a um a value add. Yeah, you provide a value add. Correct. Okay, all of the above. Now, here is something that sometimes we forget. Oops. Okay, so people buy because they believe their lives will be better or different after using your products or service. So let's just pause here for a moment. Now, it doesn't matter what you sell, but don't you think in some way your products or services can help your clients do their job better or somehow make their lives easier or better in any way? Who thinks that? Right, right? Because if you don't think your products or services can make your client's lives better or different, then why? Why would they bother to buy your products or service? Right? So this is the fundamental principle. Now, uh, so they have to believe, right? So this is a belief that you can somehow make their lives better or different afterwards. Now, a belief is a feeling and state of mind that we consider something true before we're able to prove it, okay? So it's a belief. That's why a buying decision is never made based on just facts because a belief is not facts, right? A belief is still a belief. So a buying decision is always made based on emotions because it's this emotion that causes us to have the belief that we're gonna be making our clients' lives better or different. And without that, it's gonna be very difficult for them to buy. Now, facts do matter, but it comes afterwards. So we use facts to justify why we buy after we buy, so we can feel good and not guilty about spending the money. Now, ladies, how many times have you bought a blouse, a dress, you know, a suit. And then you say, oh, I need this because it's gonna me, look me, make me look better when I walk into this room to have a meeting, right? How many times we have bought shoes and say, oh, we need this new pair because it's gonna go better with our outfit, right? And guys, how many times you say, oh, we need the newest iPhone or we need the newest this and that because it's gonna help me do my job better, make my life easier, right? But we do need the facts. So I want you to guys start thinking about, you know, in what way can you make your life, can you make your client's lives better or different? Okay, we're gonna come back to that. Now, let's look at some iconic brands and the feelings they invoke in us. Apple, think different. Nike, just do it. Airbnb, belong anywhere. How do you, how do they make you feel when you look at these brands and their taglines? Anyone? Confidence. Uh-huh. Anything else? Um, it looks simple or sounds simple, feels simple. Feel simple, okay. Anybody else? Trust. Trust, right, right? Trusting. So, right, so anybody else? You can put it in the chat too if you want. I'll try to monitor it from time to time. So when you look at these brands and you see the tagline, it makes you feel something. Is that right? It doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what it is, but it makes you feel something. It makes you feel like, oh, think different. Am I thinking different? Yeah, it's it's kind of like, okay, you know, Apple versus, you know, Windows. Apple people, some people, not everybody, you know, some Apple users are very, very passionate about their brand. They will not, you know, get, you know, an Android phone or they would not get, you know, like a Windows, you know, or other type of computer. They will only use Apple, right? They're very passionate. 
Nike, just do it. It, 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 I mean, when you see it, just do it. You see? So no more, no more excuse, whatever, whatever excuses you have, just get up and do it. Right. No more excuses. Airbnb belong anywhere. So let's think about the feelings you want your customers to have when they're using your products or services. Can somebody tell me how, what kind of feelings you want your customers to have by buying from you? Confidence. Satisfaction. Satisfaction, yes, absolutely. Confidence, I hear, right? Anything else? Excitement. Excitement, I like that. Yes, of course. Without excitement, yeah, right? You want your customers to be excited about using your products and services, for sure. Anyone else? Relief. Relief that they have this incredible product and it's just tremendous relief or they have your great services that made their work life so much easier. Sure. Yes, absolutely. See, it's all of that. Okay, so let's take a look at what is storytelling? What do you think storytelling is? When I ask this question, a lot of people tell me, oh yeah, I've been using storytelling. And then I ask them, oh, how, do you, how have you been using it? They say, oh, we've been posting on social media. Okay, so posting on social media is not storytelling. Posting on social media is posting, okay? So what exactly is storytelling? Can anyone tell me? In business, when I say, okay, let's do storytelling in business. It's authentic, authentic messaging, authentic communications from the heart. And again, example, let's do PR for a road race. And I created his 50th anniversary of Title IX. I created this tribute to the greatest female runners in the South Bay, whatever. And I got every single network TV channel, KTLA there for hours, again, because it was authentic, was honest, it, it again reached their heart and mind. So that's storytelling. Yeah, storytelling is really, you know, here to reach the hearts of your customers. So storytelling in business is crafting a story to evoke an emotion with the intent to connect and change the perception of a brand. It's really about, you know, evoking that emotion within your clients and customers with the intent to connect because there is no other and better way than storytelling when it comes to connecting because storytelling has been around for how long? Since Stone Age, I believe, right? So in the, back in the old days, you know, generation used the storytelling to pass all their knowledge and wisdom to younger generations. So storytelling has been around for a very, very, very long time. But only until, you know, in the last, I would say, few years or so, people started realizing, oh, wow, we can actually use storytelling in business to connect and get people to buy from us. So that's why storytelling is so popular right now. So why storytelling? And you guys said this before. Oh, Michelle, you have a question? Is it uh, because of the wave of our social media and how it's so ingrained in almost everybody's daily lives that storytelling is now expected in business? Well, I won't exactly say expected in business, but you definitely will have an edge if you use storytelling. Because, and, and here's why, because we're in a very noisy and crowded marketplace. Everyone is trying to get ahead. And regardless of what you sell, there will always be a competitor and there will always be somebody cheaper, right? There will always be somebody who's willing to work longer hours, who's willing to, you know, do a cheaper um, sale just to, just to make a quick sale. So how do you compete, right? You cannot compete on price anymore. You cannot compete on, you know, like, what, not sleep 24 seven customer service, right? You can hire, you know, VAs, but still, right? So there are a lot of things that you, you really shouldn't be and, and shouldn't use that to compete anyway. So that's why storytelling has become so popular because that is the quickest and fastest way to get to the heart of your audience. 
on a much bigger scale. And that's why I hope I answered your question. Okay, so why storytelling? So storytelling is really there to connect with your customers on an emotional level to build trust and influence their opinions and feelings about your brand. So, and, and a good way to find out what your brand is, your brand is, is ask your customers because a brand is not what you think it is. A brand is what your customers think it is. So if you're unsure about what your brand is, you know, call up your favorite, you know, or long-term customers and ask them, hey, I want to ask you a question. Can you tell me what you think my brand is? Let them tell you. And if they tell, if what they tell you is very similar to what you think it is, then you're pretty much on point. But if what they tell you is completely different than what you think it is, that means you have a lot of work to do. Okay, so what is a brand story? Can anybody tell me what a brand story is? Let's say if I say, okay, let's create a brand story today. Let's walk out here today having a brand story. What, do you, think, what the, do you think has to go into oh, your brand ahead. story? It's the heart and essence of your service or your product. It's, again, it's visual. It's, um, again, dynamic. The words that reaches your heart, reaches your mind. It's the passion point about your brand. Yes. Anybody wants to add? Okay, well, a brand story is a cohesive narrative of your why, aspiration. You have, you have a comment in the chat too, Melissa. Oh. oh, okay, of your brand or told in a storytelling format to help your customers decide if they want to buy from you. Now, again, the storytelling is a tool and this is a skill set that everybody can learn, okay? Everybody can learn how to be a better storyteller. And the brand story is a cohesive narrative of everything that constitutes to what your brand is about. Okay, so let me look at the chat. Yeah, going to vote emotion, right. Okay, good. So we're going to move on. So I'm going to give you two examples and I want you to tell me which one you like more and why. Hi, I'm Lynn Murphy and we're talking about my new book coming out called Women Who Push the Limits. This started with discussion with my coach who has been telling me for years, it's time to write a book. And I wasn't really happy with the ideas that I had come up with to do that. But we came up with an idea for women who are making a difference in the world. And it came out of the, the midterm elections where there were so many women who were running for office, putting their name in the hat and standing up and saying, this is what needs to happen. This is the world that we need to live in. And we want to make that change. And I decided to interview women who are pushing the limits in all areas. So, you know, not just celebrities or people who are semi-celebrities, but everyday women who can inspire other women to do what they want to do, to, to push through those obstructions, those obstacles, and reach their goals, reach their dreams. So it's going to be a combination of women from the never, people have never heard of them. And other women, they'll say, oh, yes, I know who that is. So I've got a great combination of women to do this. We really want to celebrate the women who have done these amazing, amazing things. Some of them are best kept secrets. Celebrate them, get their stories out, and then let other women understand that they can do what they need to do, what they've always wanted to do, or what their obstacles are setting up for them in their lives. Okay, let's look at the next one. Hi, I'm Lynn Murphy, and I'm writing a new book called Women Who Push the Limits. You know, I grew up with a wonderful family, and I always wanted to be a teacher. 
And they encouraged me to be that, but never to take risks. It was always about being safe, playing it safe. And I did that for so many years of my life. Didn't really work out that well. I wasn't really satisfied. And I've changed careers several times in my decades on this earth. And now I know that it's so important to risk and to, to push for things that I really want. So I wanna inspire other women through the stories that, that this group of women I'm collecting and weaving together can inspire other women and even men you know, who care about other women, care about the women in their lives to push those limits and to go for their dreams and go for their goals and to understand that the fear is gonna be part of it. How do you overcome those obstacles? and be true to who you really are to be authentic and to get your message out there. So these women who I'm gathering are gonna share these amazing, amazing stories and are inspiring other women to know that you don't have to be famous, you don't have to be rich. You can inspire other women to do what they need to do to claim their lives and have much better lives, to take those risks and to push the limits. Okay, which one do you like more and why? You like number two, why? I like number two because um, like I could uh, relate and I was like, oh, well, this is interesting and, and maybe it's for me. The first one was like, oh yeah, that's all very interesting what she did. But the second one was, oh, and maybe it could relate to me. Maybe I could push the limit. So got excited, interested. Yeah, and Michelle? I felt like uh, she really brought you into the kind of experience with the second one, that those like headline kind of statements were really powerful to keep you on your, your attention on it. Correct. Now, if you really look at them side by side, right, the facts are pretty much the same. But the second one, she told it in a storytelling format and that's why it's relatable. So the first one, she basically just like spit out all the facts, right? And after a while, your brain was like, oh, I can't take any more, <laughs> right? And then your brain will start tuning out because it's just too many facts. We can absorb so many facts all at once because it's just all very factual. But the second time when she did it, she did it in a way that is compelling and relatable because she actually told you why she did it and the impact that she wants to, her book to have, right? So inspiring to you makes you think, oh, maybe we can all push our limits. Yeah. One was personalized. The second one and the other, as you say, was very general. One right. felt it was from the heart and it was sincere and authentic. The other was just talk in the air. The other was more from her head. This, the second one is more from a heart, right? So you see the difference, right? So that's why I want to encourage you. So from now on, when you start talking about your company, start from the heart space instead of the head space. And we're going to practice, okay? All right. So next, I'm going to show you two more examples. And again, I want you to tell me which one you like more and why. Hi, my name is Adrian Marin. I'm the owner of m 4 LA. The reason we do what we do is because of the need that we identified in the market for a, a com the, an online marketing company delivering real tangible results to our customers and helping them generate more clients in order for them to uh, improve their bottom line in the uh, means of uh, company revenue. Hugh General. Adrian Marin. I'm the owner of m 4 LA. Our company was born from uh, uh, the need to, uh, to get results to the customers and uh, in, in the online marketing space. About 20 something years ago, my father owned a company and he was selling the live cattle and uh, milk processing plants. And it was real hard for him to expand at the time uh, on, on, uh, through uh, online marketing because there was no such thing back then. And fast forward about 15 years later, I was working with uh, digital agencies and uh, I got excited over the fact that I, I thought that if 
he would have had the, the means of social media and all these advertising channels that are nowadays, he could have expanded his business a whole lot more than he did back then. And I became inspired by uh, um, how uh, you can utilize, properly utilize uh, online marketing channels nowadays to properly market your business and uh, get more clients. Which one is your favorite? See? Why? Why do you like it? Relatable. Go ahead. Sorry. Yep, relatable. Somebody else. It's a, again, it's from his heart. It just was his story. The other were just facts and figures and Again, it didn't feel, you know, there was nothing that really made it unique regarding him and his company. Right. So the second time he shared with you why he started his business, right? And it's, it's actually because of his dad. He witnessed how his dad, you know, wasn't able to really utilize social media marketing to help his company. So it's a personal story. And that made him wanting to start his own company and that's why he's more relatable right so start thinking about elements that from your past experience or past you know uh, work history that you can bring into your story to make it more personal all right so we're going to look at some more examples to hopefully help you identify what elements you need to pull together to draft your uh, brand story Oh, somebody has a raised hand. Okay, Michelle. Uh, yes, I was just wondering, can your story be too long? Like, how do you know when it's too long? Well, um, a story should not be extra, extra long because depending on the format, you're delivering it, right? If you're telling it to a person, it should you know, be maybe 30 seconds a minute the most. Um, when you're doing it on paper, let's say if you have a longer story, you can post that story on the website and that's okay. And people can read the longer version. But if you try to tell it verbally, never, never do a really, really long version only because when it's too long, then people will start losing interest. And then you don't want that. You don't want to bore people. So that's why, you know, you want to tell a, a quick and concise, impactful story. Thank you. Hmm. Okay, so this is a CPA story. And for the longest time, he did not know why he wanted to, be, to become a CPA. So, so he came to me because he said, okay, I have a good stable pool of clients, but I like to always <clears throat> get more, get more interest, you know, people interested because you never know who's gonna drop out. So I like going to networking events and um, I like to be able to, you know, be more effective in, in my, you know, um, you know, um, communication. So I said, okay, what have you been uh, telling your clients, potential clients at networking events? He said, oh, very simple. I just tell people that uh, I'm a CPA, I like numbers and I love helping people save money from Uncle Sam. I said, okay, but don't you think that's a little too generic? He said, yeah, you got a point. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. I said, okay, well, that's why, we, that's why we're here. We're going to figure it out. So I said, well, why don't you share some stories with me? And he goes, well, I don't really have any stories I could share. Well, I said, well, everybody has stories. Just share a client story. He said, well, actually, um, none of my clients have been audited. So I don't really have a very good story to tell I said, okay, well, what about, you know, why you started your business? Oh, I already told you I started it because I love numbers and I just like, I just like, you know, helping people filing, you know, file the taxes. I said, okay, well, what about in college? You know, you, everybody has stories from college. He said, oh, not really. I always went back to the dorm on time. I was a pretty good student. Didn't do, didn't do any crazy parties. I didn't really have any good stories to tell. So at this point, I feel like I was pulling teeth, right? It was very difficult. So I said, okay, well, what about high school? Nah, I have pretty good parents. I didn't really have any interesting stories. So I said, you know what? We're not leaving until you give me one good story. 
and I could almost tell sweat was starting to come down. <laughs> and I said, well, we're not leaving. So I said, well, I'm going to give you as long as you want, but you have to, you know, think of something, go back further. What about, you know, when you were younger, you got to tell me one good story, then we can leave. So after a while, he said, you know what, if you didn't push me this hard, I, I, I could not remember this story. I've never shared with anybody. My father was audited when I was nine years old. And I remember standing in the doorway, watching him pace back and forth, trying to get his paperwork ready. And I so wanted to help, but I was too young. I didn't know how, how. And he was driving the whole family crazy. Everyone was so stressed out because we didn't know how to help him. So why do you think he became a CPA, right? You see, this, this buried memory has been sitting in his brain for how long now, right? All these years. He didn't even know that was the reason why. So subconsciously, he already decided at nine years old, but of course he was too young. He, didn't, he couldn't really make the association, but that's why. See how powerful that was? So now instead of saying, hi, I'm a CPA, I'm so-and-so, I just like helping people save money. He doesn't talk about that at all. Now he says, hi, I wanna share my childhood story with you. The first time I witnessed somebody getting audited was I was nine, it was my father. And I, I cannot tell you how stressful that was. For me, my sister, my mom, my whole family. And I, I took a vow on that day to never let this happen again. And the only way I could help prevent this was to become a CPA. And when I work with my clients, I make sure that their paperwork is ready to go at any given moment. So in a way, he's, he already narrowed down his ideal clients. Because for people who don't care about their paperwork, they're not his ideal clients. But for people who really care about the paperwork and, and wanted to be ready at any given moment, they're his ideal clients, right? So, so all I'm saying is, you know, if you can't really find a good reason why you started your business, somehow it has something to do with you either growing up or something happened along the way that made you choose what you do today. And this story, again, you know, Oh, sorry, press the wrong button. Um, so his father getting audited and the emotion is witnessing the stress it causes, you see? So that's why any, anybody can relate. Who likes getting a call from, you know, <laughs> you know, and calling in to be audited? Nobody, right? So we can all relate. All right, next example. Um, he, he used to be in finance and now he chose to be a will executor. And I say, well, why did you want to become an will executor? Is that such a niche business? He said, because his father has no will. And at one point, his father got really, really ill. And he was called to make all the decisions because he was the next of kin. And he told me he didn't know what paperwork to fill out. It was a mess. And even if you fill out the paperwork, if it's not the right paperwork, it's not gonna, you're not gonna get any help. And it was just very, very difficult. And he was working full-time at the time. And he said, well, I, again, I don't want anyone to go through what I had to go through. So instead of, instead of keep working as a, as a financial person, he decided to become a will executor to help other people to jump through the hoops and having the right paperwork to fill out. So they don't have to go through what he went through for his father. Again, a very personal journey. Okay, and let's just switch perspective a little bit. This is a bigger company, okay? So let's say, you know, if, okay, I have a bigger company. I have, I have a known company. Everybody knows my brand, right? Western LAX. So before we work together, the, they, the way they sell the hotel is, okay, we have hotel stays. We have corporate events, special events, weddings, award celebrations. What do you need? What do you want? Who wants to hear that, right? It's a long list. So now they say, well, at Western LAX, we offer customizable experience. 
it doesn't matter where you corporate clients. It doesn't matter whether you're just individual looking for, you know, a, a few hotels, nice days, right? Customizable. And then after they say that, they can say, oh, we have Peloton rooms with this, with that, you know, how can we help you choose? So when you talk about experience, immediately you evoke some emotion in your customers. When I say, oh, customizable experience, it takes you to what? Probably your last vacation or something, right? It reminds you of something. So now they're more ready to listen to what you have to offer. And then um, we identified 24 feelings they want the customers to have. And we decided to use 12 value propositions and we attach each story to every um, single proposition for them to talk to the clients. And we have a new tagline, which is achieve your vision. So it doesn't matter you know, what you want, they can help you achieve it. So crafting your brand story. Now articulate your why. What motivates you at night? What keeps you up? What makes you wanna get up in the morning? When I ask this question, a lot of people answer them. They go, oh, I want more time with my family. Okay, that is the result of your why. Because you do what you, what you do, that's why you can afford to have more flexible time with your family. That's not your why. People go, oh, I don't want to be dependent on the paycheck from my company. I want to, I want to, you know, I want to um, make more money. I get that is the result of your why. So what is your why? Focus on the benefits, solutions, and transformation you bring to your clients. Remember when we first started, right? Your clients' lives have to be changed after using your products or services. So what are the benefits that you bring to the table? How are you different than your competitors? And how are you similar, right? If you, if you offer the exact same thing, how are you different? For example, you know, I have over 25 years of, of experience. That's a differentiator, right? I have helped my clients raise sales up to 400%. That's a differentiator. I came from a news background. That's my differentiator. So think about how you can differentiate yourself with your competitors. And any proof and success or past results. If you have successfully helped your clients do a certain thing, list that. Use those as excellent examples because that's going to help you stand out from your competitors. And very lastly, what is your mission and vision? What do you want your company to go? What is your mission in your business? So I'm going to give you maybe um, two or three minutes to answer these questions. And raise, feel free to raise your hand if you have a specific question or you need help.
Is everyone pretty much done? Yes? Okay. Hot seat. <laughs> That's why I asked you to write the questions first. <laughs> I need a volunteer who's brave enough. Raise your hand if you want to try telling your brand story that we just crafted. Maji, okay. Okay, I'll go first. Go so for it. Everybody will see how easy this is. I got to everything except for I didn't culminate a mission or vision. So okay, um, just I have a farm stand at the edge of my property. So benefits I bring to my clients. Um, sorry, I have to put my glasses on. Um, benefits, fresh, natural food. And a differentiator is that everything is, I, don't, I need to say this better, but harvested in a regenerative way. It's harvested in a way that makes the land healthier. It doesn't deplete the land. So I need to, I need to refine that. Proven success. Um, we've been able to take this land, re rejuvenate it so it feeds my family plus can offer hundreds of eggs and hundreds of pounds of produce to the local community. And my mission vision, I'm just gonna say this off the top of my head, is to be able to share the bounty of this land as the land gets healthier. And I basically wanted to pay for it, so. Mm. Not okay. And, um... What I did hear was the, the benefits or solutions. Um, the benefits. Well, yeah. The benefits is fresh, natural, locally grown food. Mm -hmm. that benefit Better health with the benefit. Yeah, benefit. better health, better exactly. Health. And yeah. convenient because it's right here in the neighborhood. So my market is like just within five miles of my house. Okay. Yeah. So better health and convenience. That would be the benefits. Okay. You see how easy that is, right? So yeah. once you start answering these questions, it's actually not that hard. You can put together your, you know, brand story really, really quickly. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I want, I want to encourage all of you to, to I'm, I can go back to the page later to start crafting your story. Okay. Start telling it. Because the more you tell it, the more you 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 can practice, and then the more you'll get better at it and be able to you know attract and win more customers. Okay, moving forward. So there are many many different ways to use your brand story. Use it for your branding and marketing efforts. Use it in your sales presentation. Use it in the way you communicate with your customers. And you want to take it one step further. Film yourself doing a video. Make content right? So many different ways. And if you start up fundraising, don't think of, don't think of, oh, where a lot of people ask me, oh, okay, great. I have a brand story. What do I do with it now? Do I just post it on my website? Yes, of course. But don't just do just that. Blast it in every way possible. Use it on all delivery mediums and platforms, okay? You have a brand story. You got to communicate. Tell people about it. Okay, so I just want to give you, maybe I'll skip this one because this is a little bit longer. This, this one is, um, is three minutes. And um, so this one, um, this is a nonprofit and they drill wells in Niger, West Africa so that women and girls don't have to walk miles to bring water back to the villages. So they actually sent me to Niger to cover the story. And um, I came back with this, you know, and created this video for them. And we raised $390,000 in three hours. Do you like, okay, so let me ask a question. Um, do we have, do we have a hard stop at um, four? Not a hard stop. If people can stay on, it's up to, up to them. So if you have a little okay. bit longer, that's okay. I'm sure they All appreciate right. the opportunity to learn from you. Okay. There's no sound. 
Oh, there's no sound? Oh. Vaguely hear some music. Oh, yeah, this is just music. You hear music, right? No music? Very light, very light. Still light? Okay, hold on. Hmm. Maybe if light. you maybe if you do the stop share, make sure you have the little button push to share the video sound. Okay, so let me see something here. Um, when you go to share screen, there should be a little button to share audio too. Let me see. Oh no. I'm stuck. <laughs> That's what I was afraid of. Sharing. Um, no. Is it up in the top, like in the header up top of that screen? Let me click here and see. Nope. It should be working because the other ones we heard. One was fine, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's just okay. be the volume on that particular video. Maybe, so let me just, just continue and see. Um, I was willing to have a good cry So the reason why I want to share this because um, originally the idea was to just showcase how, how much hardship the women and the girls have by just walking miles to get water. But once I got there, I realized the girls get married off at, you know, before they turn 14 because they never got the chance to go to school. It is a Muslim country and it's a woman's job to go get water. So all the mothers will bring all the girls with them to go to the, you know, nearby village to draw water from a well so and then they got to walk back so the girls get yanked out of school and don't don't even have a chance to be educated so that's why it's a vicious cycle and when they don't they, when they don't get educated then they get married off and also because their water is so bad so contaminated um the mortality rate is very very high i interview one woman who's only 39 at the time and she gave birth to nine children only one survives so it's very, very heartbreaking. Um, so I, when I came back, I told them that the story is much bigger than just showing women carrying water on the head. 
Um, so we changed the direction of the story. And that's why, you know, it, it was able to raise more money because it really touches people's hearts. So that's why, you know, if you are doing any fundraising effort, make sure that you can truly touch the heart because that will make people open up their wallets. So that's why I want to share this. Um, next one. It is an anti-smoking campaign that we did for the California Institute of the Arts. Uh, sorry, a California uh, Department, <laughs> Department of Health. And it is an anti-smoking campaign. Um, and uh, we did this one in six different languages and uh, four different spots. And this is one of the spots. Oh, wait, how come it's not full screen? All right, I'll try to play here then. Okay, here we go. You inhale, they inhale. Millions of children continue to be exposed to secondhand smoke. Secondhand smoke causes asthma, a disease that cannot be cured. Protect your loved ones. Right, very simple story, not much dialogue, but showcasing the impact. If you secondhand, if you inhale secondhand smoke, then you may harm your children. Um, okay, so these are just examples to show you. You can take, if you want to take your brand further, you can create content that can help your brand reach more audience and more customers and more people. Okay, so um, if you really want to, you know, get more customers, so there are many different ways that I work with people. So I work with people to craft a brand story and elevate the pitch. We, we help you identify your special value propositions. We teach you how to create video content based on your brand story. And for those of you who are interested in doing your talk, you know, I help people build their keynote speeches or build their talk. I do um, media training. And um, if you want to also, you know, lend a quarter of a million dollar job, I've done that for some high, high level CEOs, CFOs as well. And today, because you're all here for this seminar, so I want to offer you a very, very special price. And that is a, um, you know, 25% off a Maui discount um, to do your crafting your brand story and elevate the pitch, both a 30 second and one minute version. And uh, articulate your why, identify all your special value propositions, define your mission and vision, and also create a tagline for your business. Because by now, you know how tagline can help position your brand and then create that emotion in your customers. Feel free to take a picture if you want to. And this is my email address and phone number. So it just reach out to me afterwards if you're interested. And um, for those of you, I want to thank you for coming. And I want to offer you an ebook called How to Be a Rockstar on Camera at rockstaroncamera.com. So feel free to go there and download the ebook. It's just five tips, very quick to read. And this is the way to connect with me. Um, follow us on at Duck Punk, at Melissa Tong, on social media. Because Duck Punk is where your story begins. Wonderful. Thanks so much, Melissa. Um, yeah. Does, does um, anybody have a burning... Oh, oh sorry, go on. Um, yeah, I always end my talk with a quote that I truly believe. The meaning of life is to find your gift the purpose of life is to give it away. So all of you are born with a very, very special gift. And when you can use your special gift and bring it into the world, your customers will come. So thank you so much for having me today. I hope you learned something and I want to be able to hear your brand story in any way possible. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Very engaging and uh, lots of useful information. And we'll make sure uh, we do a, give a, a summary, particularly of those questions as we follow up. And you'll, everyone will have the recording to review it. Does anyone have a burning question? We have we are at the end of the hour, but if you have a burning question, um, Leslie's got her hand on it. That's her applause. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, does anyone have a burning question? Pop your hand up. Otherwise, I'm just going to quickly share my screen again.
and, uh, and and think if you think of questions while well, I just go through this spiel just want you to all know about upcoming events it's been in our emails next week on Friday we have a number of in-person workshops on Maui which is um, helping you to elevate your pitch to connect um, there'll be opportunities to practice your pitch work within groups and there'll be a panel of speakers um, uh, of actual corporates looking and basically learning you know what rather than thinking what do you think people want to hear really knowing what is it that they want to hear from you and then also then going into certification for women in business minority owned businesses uh, that's a that's a big factor of why we have this series the Hawaii women in business seminar series there are many benefits to being certified to help expand and grow your business and then we have networking that's exclusive for the women and minority small business owners if your business is at least 51 percent owned by a woman or minority then you're welcome to that networking opportunity to meet like-minded people and then we have Maui Tekahana for those who are tech minded and this is an opportunity again networking is in person we always have a guest speaker and Mark Williams will be talking about his work with the brain trust it's about AI um, blockchain um, lots of things that I don't know <laughs> much about so uh, it's a, it'll be an interesting event as well and uh, we also invite you to join the cohort which is helping you with certification as a step into then working with Webex who support this series and have been wonderful um, at, at introducing us to Melissa Tong and a bunch of speakers that we've got all scheduled for the next uh, every month we'll have a have a webinar um, but if you are interested in joining the cohort cohort where you'll learn more about the steps it takes to get certified, then e please email us info at High Tech Maui, or there is that feedback form, uh, which Leilani will again pop the link in. We really appreciate your feedback on the presentation. Um, the link is there to uh, help us continue to grow. So um, in that time, did any questions pop up, Melissa? I Right now, as I share my screen, I can't see. I don't think so. No? Oh, good. So uh, <laughs> awesome. We've got mahalos. Thank yous. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Melissa. And uh, we'll get the recording out to you soon. A big aloha. Enjoy the rest of your day.